Welcome to episode 36 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folk Tales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn how Baldur's Dream sends Odin to visit the Cirrus to get answers in Baldur's Dream. The god moaned. He twisted and writhed as he tried to escape the dark shapes. He panted and moaned again, and then he awoke. For a long while, the fairest of the gods lay in the half-light, his brow gleaming as white as the whitest flower, his hair shining, and he tried to snare his dream, to name each form and dismiss it. But the shape sulked in the shadows, shapeless now that he was awake, and in time his fear lapsed into a dull foreboding. He closed his eyes and began to drift. No sooner was he asleep than his ghastly skull guest crept forward yet again. Monstrous forms intent on snuffing out the light of him. He threshed and kicked. He called out and his own shout woke him up. Once more he felt fearful and exposed and doomed. When the gods and goddesses heard about Baldur's dream, they anxiously gathered to discuss their meaning. They said that he was the most merciful, the most gentle and loved of them all, the least deserving of such unwelcome night visitors. They said nothing tainted had ever crossed the threshold of bridal black before. But all they said only disturbed them more. They could not unravel Baldur's dream. I will go myself, said Allfather, Baldur's father, and return with a meeting. The magician, old as time, stood up and hurried out of the council. He saddled Slepnir, galloped over the quivering rainbow, and took the long, long track that led from Midgard down into the gloom and the swirling mist of Nevelheim. Hell's hound heard Odin coming. The hair of Garum's throat and chest was caked with blood, and he bayed from his cliff at the entrance to the underworld. The master of runes took no notice. He galloped so hard that the frozen ground thrummed under Slepner's eight hooves, and he did not let up until he reached Hell's forbidding hall. Here Odin dismounted. He peered into the hall. It was packed out with the dead and gleaming with gold rings and gold ornaments. And then Slepner, round to the east door near where Sirius was buried, Odin stood beside her mound and fixed his one glittering eye upon it. Then he began to use charms, and in the gloom the pale specter of the seers rose out of the earth and loomed over him. Who, she moaned, who is the stranger who forces me up and unearths me to sorrows? Snow has settled on me, rain has lashed me, dew has seeped through me, I have long been dead. My name is Vogtom, the Wanderer, Odin said, and I am Valtrum's son. Give me news of hell. I have traveled already through the other worlds. Why are gold rings strewn along the benches in hell's hall, and why is the whole place decorated with gold? Who are you expecting? The shining mead, said the seeress, is brewed for Baldur. A shield covers the cauldron. For all their glory, the gods will be filled with despair. I was unwilling to speak, and I will say no more now. Seeress, you must stay, Odin said. You must answer all that I ask. Who will slay Baldur and drain the lifeblood of Odin's son? Blind Hod will carry a fatal branch. He will slay Baldur and drain the life blood of Odin's son. I was unwilling to speak, and I will say no more now. Cirrus, you must stay, Odin said. You must answer all that I ask. Who will take vengeance on Hod? Will you carry Baldur's slayer to the pyre? Hrand will lie with Odin. And their son will be Voli, born in West Sali, the Western Hall. 
He will take vengeance when he is only one night old. He will not wash his hands nor comb his hair before he has carried Balder Slayer to the pyre. I was unwilling to speak, and I will say no more now. Cyrus, you must stay, Odin said. You must answer all that I ask. Who are the maidens who will keen then, and toss their scarves up against the sky? You are not Vog Tom, said the Cyrus, as I believed you to be. You are Odin, the magician, old as time. And you are no Cyrus, Odin said, nor are you wise. You are the mother of three monsters. Ride home, Odin, and boast about your skills, said the Cyrus. Her voice was rising and gloating. No one will raise me again until Loki breaks free from his fetters and all the forces of darkness gather before Ragnarok. The specter, pale and gleaming, began to ooze and to sink back into her grave. Then Odin turned away and mounted Sleipnir with a heavy heart. And here's where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales. Many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.